What's going on people? Welcome to another video. I'm endlessly excited to tell you that my debut album is out now, everywhere. All streaming services, wherever you listen to your music. Dusk by Fabi Masur, 16 songs. Just go stream it. Let me vibe out for a minute. I don't give up what you say. So yeah, I'm doing this video just to talk a bit about the album, the process of making it, the tracks, the vibe, my inspiration for it, and all that. So let's just start with the beginning. I started working on this album in 2022, so two years ago, and I finished it last summer. And the reason why it came out in February of 2024 is simply because label negotiation, mastering, visual profiles videos all that stuff just took so long so so the album title is dusk and that was the inspiration for it so that part of the day where it's not day and it's not night and it's kind of mysterious those mysterious hours and i feel like the vibes of the tracks fit dusk pretty well so that's why i named the album dusk but yeah inspiration for it as well growing up on hip-hop slowly getting into the edm space and now I'm here like as an EDM producer, electronic music producer, trying to do something that felt a little bit nostalgic, like 2013, 14 SoundCloud EDM trap era, but still felt modern and had my signature sound, meaning rhythm, flow, bounce, and my vocals in all of the tracks. So yeah, wrote all these songs myself. I do have a few featuring artists on the album but yeah pretty much wrote this whole album myself and i'm excited for you guys to see it i did another video where i talk about my goals where i also broke down the budget spendings on this album one of the main posts of the album expenses was the videos i shot short form music videos for all the songs instead of doing a couple of music videos so yeah preview of those short music videos on screen now i've been doing everything in my control to get to you So yeah, Dusk, the album, structure-wise, a lot of the songs have verses, build-ups, and drops. So it has a verse like a hip-hop song or like a rap or R&B pop song, and then it goes into a drop. And that's why I try to find that middle ground in between electronic music, because I want, like, I want rap listeners to be able to appreciate this album as well. But I also do want to stay in the electronic lane with the sound of the album, especially tracks like All Again. I've nailed a sound in a space where it can also be appreciated by people who are not EDM listeners per se. That was really a big thing I tried to do with this album. So yeah, let's break down some of the productions on the album. It's the poison, the flow so dangerous. Now, I'm in the project of the song called Dangerous. I actually made this song in 2020, I think. And I feel like this is one of the songs that really kept up sounding relevant and sounding timeless. I don't want to say timeless, but... super proud of the sound design I did on this track. What you'll hear on this album is that a lot of the drums on the album has my character. So if we just solo the groups here. It's lightly swung, it bounces, flows, a lot of chants, a lot of panning, a lot of saturation, a lot of that goodness. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the drums. Now let's us dive into the drop leads because I think that's one of the more interesting parts of this track. Now, what you guys are all wanting to know is how I made the main drop lead. And it is actually, let me just remove this plugin. It is actually made in Native Instruments Playbox. Just a randomizer type plugin. And without any processing, it sounds like playing around, sampling a bunch of stuff, and I heard this. I was like, huh, this sounds so dope for like a hip hop beat. And then I ended up just like distorting the hell out of it. Isotope trash, black box, 
Spectre and this VSC2 um, compressor, which I find is really good for like aggressive tones. Um, and yeah, as you can see, I'm like bit crushing the high end by like 6 dB. And yeah, it makes for this crazy lead. Super resonant, super weird. It sounds like it's different samples being used. And that's why I love stuff like Playbox, where there is some kind of random function to it. After that, I of course made a bunch of layers. Choir thing. Harmony thing I made in the chord section of Playbox. And then... And then all together of the leads, they sound like this. And then of course we have a bunch of effects leads. I usually make these by exporting the lead group, putting processing on, reverb, reversing, doing all that stuff just to create tension. Whole bunch of different stuff here. And I should also note that I do mix these tracks down in a different project. So this is not the final mix down, but still it sounds pretty close to be honest. Also, besides that, we have the bass, which for a song like this, I have the main sub here. Which is a pretty simple sine wave in Serum that is saturated. Now, besides that, I have some basses here. Just to create some width. That one stabby bass is super wide as well. Just to create some like impact on the kicks as well. I should note one of the main techniques I use in getting this drop so bouncy, manual sidechain. And a whole lot of automation here. Infiltrator going up and down. Um, endless smile stuff for the transitions, low cuts, all that stuff. Just a whole bunch of automation to really get the drums punching through, but still controlling every single piece of side chaining here. As you can see, I'm also ducking before the kick hits. So it dodges the kick by a little bit, um, which is a super cool effect for stuff like this. A final thing on this dangerous track is the vocal. Because that's actually pretty funny to dive into. The final vocal on the track sounds like this. It's dangerous. Mess up the brain like angel does. The walk so crazy, them afraid of us. Piss the poison, the flow so dangerous. So it has a super special, like, artifact resonance feel, weird mouth format thingy about it. Let me just play the main group here and just take the plugins off. Because then you'll hear how I performed the vocals to get it sounding like this. It's dangerous! Mess up the brain like Angel does! Go so it's all the way up there. It's like, it's dangerous! All the way like in the high tone I can do. And what I mainly did on this vocal is one, five semitones down and just messing with the formant a little bit. I do think I automated the formant. Yes, I did a lot. And I also automated the pitch on the vocals in the drop. Super strange. Then automating in some Valhalla Supermassive for that width. Now all of a sudden we go from This Dangerous to This Dangerous. That weird format thingy is actually Manipulator. Now this is a hit or miss thing. I've tried this so many times where it didn't work. But on this particular track, it gave the vocal a really weird sound. <laughs> So the next track I want to talk about is the lead single off the album called Take Over the World. Essentially, this song shows a different side of me. It's more emotional. Um, I wrote it myself as well. Trying to capture more of a dark, melancholic feeling, um, late drive at night type vibes. And I essentially wrote the entire track over this very simple chord progression that I did that sounds like this. Now, the sound you hear comes from Scarbo, which is by Teletone Audio. Great, great, great contact plugin manufacturer. They do great stuff. 
little overpriced, but it sounds so great if you were looking for that analog tone that you can also find in the prints in Artorias lab stuff and all that stuff. Yeah, essentially just running that through the Juno chorus. I believe this chorus is free or used to be free. Um, just emulates the old Juno 60 chorus. Great effect. And then just widening it up a bit. And yeah, I wrote the entire track vocals that is over these chords. And I think the verse vibes here is very special in the vocal production. Might as well vanish. Spend the whole lifetime and I still can't fully understand it. I've ever been out here, my head's been around like planets. I've been on a search for something that feels like magic. Very, very interesting sound. Um, I really think I created something that doesn't sound like the typical Fabi Masur sound with this. The vocals are interesting because the main lead here Might as well vanish. is actually formatted down. So the whole verse is formatted down because my natural tone would sound like this. Vanish. Spend a whole lifetime and I still can't fully understand it. My tone can be a little bit nasal up there. That's why I formatted it down. And yeah, the vocals are also characterized by the choir stuff I did on there. So I just recorded a bunch of doubles and choirs on here for these phrases here. Played around a lot with vocal effects, formatting, pitching up and down, creating weird harmonies, just to make the vocals sound a little bit special and alternative. But yeah, um, I thought it would be cool to show the drop of this song. Because it sounds very organic and I feel like I created a weird like vibey sound with this. It's kind of like crying in the club type music. Um, but yeah, the main group sounds like this. Consisting of these chords. also made on the Scarbo synth and then like a mid-range sync type synth as well and then having the sub go stabby one so the rolling one and it's almost like serum going into a little bit of saturation in the black box going into pull take EQ going into this one, just cutting off all the highs. So it's only below like 150 hertz, you can hear this up. So yeah, this is kind of a like listen on headphones type track. And then there is of course, a bunch of vocal chops. So this is my choir and I just put my own voice into Quanta, as you can see here. Modulating the grains here and modulating the source position and the grain length as well for the second one. And as you will see with this project, it is a lot more simplified. I really try to like do the less is more thing with this song. So a lot of the chains will consist of like OTT and EQ. That's it. Um, sitting on a group with some automating reverb and delay. That's about it to be honest. But I really thought this track captured something unique and that's why I wanted to show this because this is not the craziest sound design project at all. It's a pretty simple chord progression, pretty simple vocals going into something that is pretty simple in terms of production but has a unique vibe nonetheless. So yeah, let's take over the world for you. <laughs> So yeah, that was some stuff from the album. If there's any other tracks you would like to see me break down, perhaps in more depth, let me know in the comments and I'll just do a video on that because I wanted to ask you guys anyway, if there was anything from the album that you wanted me to break down in depth. But yeah, please go listen to the album. I really hope you guys will enjoy it. It's a mix of electronic music and rap, I would say, and R&B, pop, something. Please listen, I really appreciate you all. Oatmeal gang, peace.